Good afternoon. Welcome to worship at Atherton Place. I'm preaching a series of sermons on the Ten Commandments today. We are looking at the Eighth Commandment, You Shall Not Steal. And the biblical basis for this message is from the Word of God. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 4, verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him according with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speaking and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Everyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Then I want to read this verse from Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And then from the 20th chapter of Exodus, verse 15, you shall not steal. This is the word of God. Now pray with me, please. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it is a living word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light before our path. Help us to believe you as you speak to us through your word and let your Holy Spirit interpret its application and relevance for us in our lives today. I ask you to do this for Jesus' sake. Amen. The Ten Commandments are God's blueprint for abundant living. They are his divinely Reveal God to finding and then living the good life. God knows that there can be no good life, no abundant life, where there is no respect for the rights and property of others. That's why our loving Heavenly Father includes in His blueprint for abundant living this commandment, You shall not steal. Now, the only reason God is interested in property is because God is interested in people. Let me repeat that. The only reason God is interested in property is because God is interested in people, in you and I. And property is a means God uses to bless people, helping us to experience the abundant life. But please remember this. Property in and of itself, has no intrinsic or lasting 
value. It is temporal. And sooner or later, it will pass away. Property has value in the sight of God only in the sense that it is something he has created to be a means to the end of meeting human needs and helping you and I to experience abundant life. That's why God commands us not to steal, forbids us to take from another that which he has given them or allowed them to have or enable them to earn as the fruit of their labors. And that's what stealing is, taking for ourselves that which belongs to another, taking for ourselves that which is rightfully theirs. God speaks plainly. You shall not take from another what is not rightfully yours what they have earned, or what I have chosen to give to them as a fruit of their labors, you shall not steal. Now, many of you know someone who is a police officer. I've had several church members who were police officers. Those police officers I know told me that 85% of crime is directly related or indirectly related to illicit drugs and other addictions. And that, that drug addiction is the motivation behind most robberies and burglaries. It is also the root cause of most embezzlement, most employee thefts, what is commonly called white-collar crime. But whatever the motivation. Whether we use a gun in a holdup, break into someone's home or business, pilfer or an embezzle in our office, plant or workplace, we are taking for ourselves what rightfully belongs to others. And the Bible says that is stealing. But as we consider this eighth commandment, I want us to see that stealing is not limited to theft, robbery, burglary, holdups, embezzlement, graft, fraud, or shoplifting. And it's, it is in the more subtle forms of stealing that I want us to think about today. And at the end of this message, I want us to consider what I think is the most common and most grievous theft of all time. In recent political races, we have heard an awful lot of talk and promises regarding taxes. Think about this. When people don't accurately and honestly file their taxes, when they fail to report all their income, when they take deductions they are not lawfully due, they are not just cheating the government, they are cheating their fellow citizens, you and I, who have to pay more because they are not paying their rightful part. Taking from others what is right, not rightfully theirs. Friends, that's stealing. When in our dealings with others we deceive them, overcharge them, or take unfair advantage of them, that's stealing. Do you recall the story of Jacob and Esau, the sons of Rebekah and Isaac? Esau, having been born first, owned the birthright that was always bequeathed to the firstborn son. One day after a long and arduous day of work in the field, Esau was starved and asked Joseph, his brother, to share some of his stew with him. Jacob took advantage of Esau's hunger and said he would give him some stew if Esau would sign over to him his birthright. You see, Jacob took unfair advantage of his brother in a time of hunger and desperate need. Later, the conniving Jacob disguised himself and deceived his half-blind, half-deaf, senile old daddy, Isaac, into bestowing on him the blessing that was rightfully due to Esau. Friends, when we gain for ourselves that which is not rightfully ours, 
what rightfully belongs to another by deceit or deception, taking unfair advantage of people in special times of need and desperate circumstances, that is stealing. Once Jesus went into the temple in Jerusalem, when he saw what was going on there, he got terribly angry. There were certain dealers who were licensed to sell animals that could be offered in sacrifice on the temple altar. What, only what they were authorized to supply animals for sacrifice. They had a monopoly. Nobody else could sell those animals but them. What made the master so angry was that those merchants were overcharging people so outrageously, several times more than those same animals would have cost if purchased outside the temple courtyard. They were taking unfair advantage of their monopoly and the people's need. And Jesus said about them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves and robbers. Listen, the sin was not in selling at God's house. The sin was in overcharging, taking unfair advantage of people in God's house. Jesus says, that's stealing. Some seven years ago, the president of a large university received a most, a most unusual letter from an alumnus. In the letter, the writer enclosed his B.A. degree and wrote, I must confess to you that on several occasions I cheated on my examinations during my years at the university. So in a sense, I stole my degree. I did not earn it. I can no longer keep what I have not rightfully earned and therefore does not rightfully belong to me. That alumnus knew that when we take shortcuts, cheat, cut corners, fail to earn fairly. It's a form of stealing. When you and I fail to pay our debts, pay what we owe, pay what we promise, that is taking from others what is rightfully theirs. When we fail to do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, or when we fail to give an honest day's pay for an honest day's work, we are taking from others what is rightfully theirs, and that is stealing. The Bible teaches that it is a form of stealing when we think of ourselves as owners instead of as stewards of our possessions. Listen, everything we have, say that everything we have is a gift from God. Something he has chosen to give to us or enabled us to have as a fruit of the time, time, life, talent, ability, skill, intellect, ingenuity, health, energy, and opportunity that God has given us. All we have is a gift from God entrusted to us by him. The truth is we really own nothing. We are recipients of God's goodness. We are stewards of our Heavenly Father's bounty, accountable to Him for what we do with what He has chosen to give to us. We are to use God's gifts for God's purposes. When we use what we have been given for nothing but our own pleasure and self-gratification, with little or no thought for God's will, that is a form of stealing. It is not the having of possessions that is a theft, for God gave them to us or enabled us to earn them. It is a selfishness that prevents us from using his gifts in the way he intends for them to be used that is a stealing. The Bible asks, will a man rob God. But you ask, how can we rob God? And the prophet says, 
God says through the prophet, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. We rob God only when, not only when we fail to return the tithe, the first 10% to God through his church, but also when we use any of his gifts in, in the way we wish instead of using them in the way God wishes is a form of stealing. But the greatest robbery of all time, the greatest theft of all, the most grievous form of stealing is when you and I fail to give ourselves, give ourselves totally, unconditionally, and unreservedly to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Why is this stealing? Here's why. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. The Bible tells us that it is stealing to take from God that which rightfully belongs to him. You and I are his by creation. And you and I are his by redemption. We are created in his image and we are bought with a price. The highest price of his own blood. Therefore, by creation and by redemption, we belong to God. You shall not steal. We are not to take for ourselves that which rightfully belongs to another. By creation and by redemption, you and I belong to God. We are bought with a price. Therefore, let us not withhold ourselves, but totally unconditionally, unreservedly give ourselves to him. Good news, good news, good news. When we do that, give ourselves unreservedly to him, that's when abundant living really begins. Father, we thank you for the abundant life that you have offered us as a free gift in and through Jesus Christ. Christ. Help us to receive that gift as a gift, something that belongs to you that you have entrusted to us, and help us to be good stewards of that gift, using it life wisely and well as you intend for our good and always for your glory. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, God bless you for joining us in worship today. I hope that uh, this message from God's Word has been a, a source of help to you in trying to be a good steward and to bring pleasure to God who finds such delight in bringing pleasure to you and to me. And I hope you'll join with us next week as we worship God.